Welcome to the 17th episode of SpaceX in the News. Today's a special day because we're going to kick things off talking about this morning's successful return of the Crew Dragon capsule, which will then lead us to a story about some butthurt Russians. We'll dive into some near future SpaceX launches, and then we'll finish by talking about some pretty exciting information happening in Boca Chica with Starship right now. Let's get started. Okay, so in case you missed it, about a week ago, the first ever Crew Dragon capsule entered orbit around the Earth and docked with the International Space Station. It was an uncrewed test flight to see if SpaceX could carry astronauts successfully into space. The capsule wasn't exactly empty though. It did carry supplies to the crew of the ISS, as well as Ripley the test dummy that was used to measure the dynamic experiences of the ride. But the one who stole the show was actually a stuffed plush toy named Buddy. After spending the last five days docked to the ISS, just this morning the Crew Dragon successfully undocked and made its way back to Earth. NASA did manage to capture some pretty awesome footage of this entire process. From departure to the orbit, which wasn't really much to see, but it was still very much appreciated from Ripley's point of view again, to the very closing of the hatch cap. And then after burning its Draco engines for about 15 minutes, Crew Dragon re-entered the Earth's atmosphere like a blazing meteor. Now this kind of viewing experience is pretty rare. I have never seen footage like this live before. So of course I made my high school students watch it, but you know, they thought it was pretty cool too. The trackers even managed to capture deployments of both the drogue chutes and the main chutes, which is awesome. We all know how much I love parachutes. Meanwhile, SpaceX's recovery fleet was on standby just off the coast of Florida. Crew Dragon then splashed down at 8.45 a.m. Eastern time, successfully completing its Demo-1 mission. And personally, I don't know how it could have gone any better. The capsule was then fished out of the ocean like a burnt marshmallow, and it would be taken back to SpaceX facilities. If this all looks and sounds awesome to you, that's because it is. But believe it or not, there is one agency out there that's not too thrilled about it. Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, had a pretty passive aggressive reaction to this achievement. Not only did they never congratulate Elon Musk and SpaceX, but they tweeted congratulations to NASA, underscoring the fact that flight safety must be above reproach. Doing so in Russian. Being the bigger man that he is, Elon tweeted that Russia has excellent rocket engineering and the best engine currently flying, with a link to the article that I just showed you. When asked why the Russians are so butthurt about the successful mission of the Crew Dragon, a Russian-based space expert claimed that because in the near future Americans will no longer have to pay for seats on Soyuz rockets, the Russian government will be losing out on about $400 million a year. And to make up for that loss, Russia could, in theory, start taking up tourists to space for a hefty dollar. But the thing is, because of all of SpaceX's recent success, they will be able to sell tickets much cheaper. To quote this Russian-based space expert, so what are we even talking about? The success of Crew Dragon puts Russia in a very tight spot. And between you and me, it's well-deserved. I mean, Russia jacked up the prices of the tickets for our astronauts to go to space on their Soyuz rockets. They've mocked NASA in the past. You know they wanted to blame that hole that they had in the International Space Station on us. And you know what? Nobody should feel bad for these Russians. Because yeah, the Soyuz is a great workhorse. But for years, they just sat back and took our money as we funneled it to them. And they didn't innovate. They didn't do anything different. So keep up the great work, Elon. I hope every success that SpaceX has really eats away at these guys. And listen, I am all about everyone uniting together so we can get people in space for the long term. But I, I just have no respect for Russia. Whew, my first soapbox moment. Exciting stuff, guys. All right, so Crew Dragon Demo's one mission is now completed. And the next SpaceX launch isn't until April, which should be the second launch of the Falcon Heavy. Workers have already begun converting Pad 39A in preparation for that launch. A while back, several of us SpaceX fans predicted that Starlink would be launching soon, and that could be happening as early as May. But what is going down in Boca Chica? Let's head there now. Well, for beginners, the middle section of Starhopper has grown in size, getting taller by the day which is pretty exciting, but that's nothing compared to what's going on with the bottom part of Starhopper. It's been hoisted up using some pretty fancy car jacks, placed on some fancy rollers, and now it's moving. Check out this fancy footage, taken just today by local resident Boca Chica Maria. Not every day you're standing on your front lawn and you watch a rocket drive by. They actually closed down the entire roadway for about three hours as they moved this sucker down to the launch pad, which by the way is still coming together quite swimmingly. You got your methane tanks on site, what appears to be some sort of concert stage for raves or Elon's mariachi band when they finally decide to uh, hop this thing for the first time. And if you're still not convinced that SpaceX is getting her done down there, they now have their own on-site fire department. <laughs> Ah, 
that wraps up today's episode of SpaceX the News, you guys. If you enjoyed this episode or found it informative or entertaining, do me a favor and hit that like button. If you found it just the opposite, or you're from Mother Russia and you did not appreciate me insulting comrades, hit the dislike button. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Until the next one, Godspeed.